I haven't been talking much about Milo Yiannopoulos because I know there are many people in our audience who don't know who he is or, or they know and don't really care to hear about him. Uh, he's the right wing alt right troll Trump supporter who's been going on college tours. He goes all over the place. Sometimes he's welcomed by violent protests, which only helps to fuel his popularity. And his big thing is that as a gay right winger who publicly talks about how he likes dating black guys, he says the left isn't well prepared to push back against him on identity since he's an anti feminist who also happens to be a gay guy and he's a right winger. I've been in touch with him off and on for several years. Here's the extent of my contact with Milo. Years ago, we were scheduled to interview him about no no topic other than online trolling. And he no call, no sh no showed. And then the next day or the day before, he said that he had been ill and just wasn't able to tell me that he wasn't going to make it on the show. And then more recently, I interviewed him about Gamergate and we talked about Gamergate. We also talked about his views about how he thinks transgenderism is a mental illness. And then more recently than that, uh, he sent out some tweets before he was banned from Twitter commenting about some of the Gamergate related interviews that I had done. OK, that's the, the full extent of my contact with Milo Yiannopoulos. He was on Bill Maher over the weekend and uh, it uh, Bill Maher received a ton of criticism for even having him on. Journalist Jeremy Scahill backed out of being on that show because Milo Yiannopoulos was going to be on. And I'd say that I, I wasn't opposed in principle to having Milo Yiannopoulos on the show. I interview people whose views I disagree with and find deplorable. Uh, I, I had no problem whatsoever with having him on. I do think Bill Maher did not do a great job of confronting Milo's actual views on a lot of issues. And in fact, Bill Maher was sort of welcoming to Milo in ways that I found uh, uh, sort of a little bit odd. I also thought that Milo was strengthened, Pat, when two of the three panelists and Bill Maher told Milo either F you or F off that those aren't arguments. And I think that that actually strengthened Milo's position when people just started swearing at him. Yeah, that was great to see. I mean, it was interesting to see how Bill Maher and Milo dealt with each other because yeah. I think they do kind of agree on a lot of points. But yeah. because there was such a circus around having him on the show, I think Bill Maher was more inclined to defend him. And you call him Milo. That's interesting. I kind of like that. Yeah, I don't know how he pronounces it. <laughs> I thought maybe you're right. Maybe yeah, Milo maybe. is not even the right way to pronounce it. OK, so he shows up on Bill Maher. This brings a lot of attention to Milo or Milo, call him what you want. And then people start checking into what he said in the past. And a clip of Milo defending effectively child rape and pedophilia has gone completely viral. And it has caused some real problems for Milo Yiannopoulos' career. It's from when he was a guest on the Drunken Peasants podcast about a year ago, a show I appeared on a couple of months ago, I believe it was. And Milo spent a long time effectively defending pedophilia, saying that attraction for adults to 13 year olds is not necessarily a bad thing, that he's glad he had a sexual relationship with a Catholic uh, priest when he was a kid. And first he talks about, well, consent is sort of arbitrary. And generally speaking, yes, there is an arbitrary nature to consent is a 16, 17, 17 and a half, 18, 19 year old mature enough to have informed consent about having sex with adults. OK, you could you could have that conversation, but then it, it explodes from there. Let's start with clip number one. I'm just going to I'll be quick. This arbitrary and oppressive idea of consent, which totally destroys, you know, um, the you know, understanding that many of us have of the complexities and subtleties and complicated nature of many relationships. You know, people are messy and complex, and actually, in in, in a homosexual world, particularly, some of those relationships between younger boys and older men, the sort of coming of age relationships, the relationships in which those older men ha help those young boys to discover who they are and give them security and safety and provide them with love and and uh, um, and uh, and a reliable uh, and sort of a rock where they can't speak to their parents. Some of those relationships are it some like of the most station to me. It, it sounds yeah, well, like you know what? You it know sounds what? like I'm Catholic grateful. priest molestation to me. And you know what? I'm grateful for Father Michael. I wouldn't give nearly such good head if it wasn't for him. Um, oh my know, look, god! Oh my god! I can't handle so it. So he keeps going on and on and defending sexual relationships between adults and 13 year olds. And he also says in this uh, appearance that sex between a 13 year old and a 38 year old is actually okay. That's the next clip. But we're talking about 13, 25, 13, 28. Um, these things do happen perfectly consensually. 
Um, often, by the way, it's the women who suffer in these because it's not. It, what normally happens in schools, very often, is it's an older woman with a younger boy, and the boy is the predator in that situation. Sorry, and he said 13 and 28, not 13 and 38. So, first of all, how is it consensual when legally it's not someone who's able to consent? That that again is a legal question. Milo is going around saying these clips have been selectively edited, but I listened to the entire section of the podcast. It doesn't seem like one of those situations where more context helps to excuse what Milo has said. It just all sounds bad, and I hope the audience will check it out. But even what I just played for you isn't really defensible in any context. And because of all this, Pat, it's gotten bad. CPAC has rescinded their invitation for Milo to speak at their conference. He lost his uh, 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 speaking gig effectively. The, the American Conservative Union, which runs CPAC, said we don't want him on stage. Uh, many of his upcoming college speaking dates have been canceled. He has this book called Dangerous that he was given a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar advance on. That's now been canceled. And reportedly, even Breitbart is con reconsidering, starting to reconsider re their relationship with Milo. I want to be super clear here. This video seems to have surfaced and gone viral because of the appearance on Bill Maher and people started paying attention to that. But some of his other views are just as deplorable as what's been pointed out here. There are many other reasons why you might want to say, oh, we don't want Milo Yiannopoulos speaking at our event. And this has nothing to do with suppressing free speech or whatever. People don't have a right to speak at any event that they want. This seems to have gone viral, but there's plenty of horrible stuff in his in his repertoire. Yeah, and these comments have been out there in the open for over a year now. I mean, yeah. the drunken peasants have a large following. I even watched this back about a year ago when it aired. And I mean, it's really no surprise. This is kind of what he does. Uh, he goes for shock value. He goes over the top. And sometimes that gets um, written off by him as disingenuous later. But you get caught in saying these horrible things. It's going to come back to bite you. And he sort of went the direction of, oh, I'm, I, this was like Brit my British humor or something like that. Here's just part of a Facebook Live thing that he did on, on Facebook yesterday. All I would reiterate is, um, you know, you guys know that I can make edgy jokes. You guys know that I can uh, sometimes um, push the boundaries of acceptable humor. This is one of those cases in which I, I should have phrased things differently. And these videos from a year ago and a year and a half ago, and I really just had no idea I was, I was going to end up being this famous, um, you know, late, boozy, long live streams. Um, I phrased things poorly and I enabled my detractors and critics to assemble um, material that looked very damning, but which does not reflect my opinion. What's fascinating to me is that the right claims to be against identity politics, particularly those based on sexual orientation. The right only became interested in Milo Yiannopoulos, a British guy, right? I mean, we're not even talking about an American commenting on American politics. We're talking about a British guy commenting on American politics because of his identity as a gay right winger. His ideas were never unique or particularly interesting unless you say that they're interesting because he is a gay conservative. And it turns out, lo and behold, Pat, that it wasn't a great idea for the right to jump behind him because of the identity politics that they claim to oppose. Yeah, and he also uses a defense that he did this all in humor. There was maybe one joke in that entire clip. And I guess, yes, yeah, sometimes when you're making a joke, you get a pass on certain things. But for the most part, I mean, that was just him speaking his mind. Yeah. And, you know, he said it was a boozy live stream or whatever, and that the phrasing was bad, maybe partially because he had been drinking. This reminds me of the Mel Gibson thing, right? I mean, no, no matter how much alcohol I have, I'm not going to start saying uh, homophobic things, for example, because I don't hold those beliefs. Mel Gibson saying the alcohol made me start saying anti-Semitic stuff. Well, it was clearly in there somewhere, and I don't think it was an issue of phrasing. Send me your thoughts about all this. Do you even care about this? I'm on Twitter at D Pacman and the show is on Twitter at David Pacman show. Today's episode is brought to you in part by none other than Blue Apron. Blue Apron ships you the exact amount of each ingredient for their recipes that's required. So you end up not wasting food. You can make sustainable, delicious home cooked meals in 40 minutes or less. Some of the meals available in February include cashew chicken stir fry with tango, mandarins and jasmine rice, udon noodle soup with miso and soft boiled eggs. I love miso. I admit that freely. And crispy barramundi with quinoa and roasted carrot salad. Uh, I actually am making the udon noodle soup in a couple days. Looking forward to it. Check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Pacman. That is P-A-K-M-A-N. 
You will love how good it feels and tastes to create home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Blueapron.com slash P A K M A N. It is a better way to cook.